Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jewel Onuk and welcome to another episode of Enigma by Jewel. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and if this is your first time, kind of subscribe to my channel so that you keep the community growing. So yeah, thank you guys so much. So guys, um, first of all, let's just ignore my eyelash and my makeup because like, I don't know what this is but let's just ignore it and let's just act like this is not on my face. Am I making sense? I know I am. So, yeah, secondly, thank you guys for my last video. Guys, thank you so much. I had 15 people watch that video. Thank you. It meant a lot to me. I was like, I wasn't expecting that. But actually, 15 people watch my video. I was really, really happy. Yeah. And please, if you watch this, kindly subscribe. Even if it's 15 people that subscribe, I'll be so happy. Kindly subscribe to my channel. Um, I really do appreciate every little engagement i have it means a lot to me and i am very appreciative from the bottom of my heart thank you so much so guys today we are actually going to talk about a very sad case it was sent to me yesterday so this case is not something that i wanted to talk about i never ever heard about the case till yesterday and my microphone is not on me <laughs> okay <laughs> oh so this case is something is a case that was sent to me yesterday by a friend she sent it to me on snapchat and i was like oh wow because like i never heard about this case before now or stuff like that so i quickly had to research it and pull up a notes and tell you guys the whole story and again i appreciate when you guys send me a note or send me people's podcast or youtube channel to watch it really means a lot like it means a lot because it's ju it just shows that yeah people are actually foiling my passion and if there's anything that i love more than that is seeing people who support me or people who stand by me when i'm trying to, when i have a passion no matter how crazy it sounds or crazy it might be thank you guys so much i really do appreciate so this case was sent to me yesterday by my friend eating book she sent me this case on snapchat basically um so this was not the case i wanted to do like i said or like i said earlier this was not i wanted to do another case but like the information was was rigid like getting information was so hard i was already stressed out when she sent this i was like okay this is a simple case then like I can tell this then maybe my next story will be what I want to tell. So yeah, thank you guys so much for staying and let's get right into it. So Kelsey Ann Smith, so in regards to this story, we are going to call her Kelsey. So Kelsey Ann Smith, she was an 18 year old girl who just graduated from high school. And like every other high schooler, she was just so excited because in the coming months, she was going to enter Kansas, Kansas, Kansas State University. So like every... 18 year old i can remember when i graduated from in secondary school i was so happy two days ago my um facebook reminded me of some memories and i saw memories of me saying i must enter covenant university even if it means for me to write jam all over again i wanted to enter university and i had the school i wanted to go to and it was something that every high schooler every high school graduate look look up to but only did she know if only she knew that that would have been her last day on earth she wouldn't have gone out, she wouldn't have gone to the mall. So when I was reading Kelsey's story, her personality reminded her of me in a way. Kelsey, they described her to be this funny girl. She was funny, she was creative, and she was very passionate. And Kelsey, she loved trying on new things, like from singing in a choir, to running, to playing in a matching band, like name it, whatever. Kelsey did it all. In case you know me, I love to try new things. I love to try things that... I just be like okay i want to put my hand i want to try this i'm that kind of person even if it means me failing i just want to try so kelsey is was that kind of person like her personality was just larger than life according to her dad so her dad also said that kelsey in her 18 years on earth she lived more her, more of her life in 18 years than a normal 18 year old person would be so kelsey kelsey was very giving like she was very loved loving like she's this kind of person that actually did love to give her parents said that as a kid when it was somebody's birthday she would literally show up to their doorsteps with balloons and bouquet for her friends and her parents also said that like when it came to times where they buy a treat for kelsey kelsey would make sure that her dad also bought for her four other siblings she won't be like selfish about it and be like oh daddy bought for me daddy didn't buy for you she would make sure that not only did her parents buy for her but her parents also bought for her four 
other siblings so like from this whole description you can see this kind of the kind of person Kelsey was she was someone who was loved she was someone who was funny creative somebody who like a parent to actually want to have as a daughter so this giving nature of Kelsey unfortunately was actually what led to this story unfortunately Kelsey had a boyfriend his name is John and they've been dating for like six months so this day was their six months anniversary and literally six months is a lot of time it's a long of it's a long time to me because in the society we live in now six months is a long time so literally on their six month anniversary she actually went to get gifts just to celebrate the little six months that they've had that they've been together not knowing that she would never ever make it back alive but on the 2nd of june 2007 kelsey she actually went to target in overland park and she went to get a gift for her boyfriend she called her mom and told her mom that she'll be returning shortly and she paid for her items and she exited the shop from kelsey's house to the store was literally an eight minutes drive but it was already an hour and kelsey had not returned home and this literally this was this made her mom worry because she was wondering like kelsey actually called and said that oh yeah she was coming home and it's been an hour and she's not back so not only was her mom troubled, even her boyfriend John was troubled and her boyfriend actually called her mom and dad and was wondering like, where's Kelsey? Her mom's name was Missy and her dad's name was Greg, asking where's Kelsey, that he's not heard from Kelsey and this would just make their parents more worried because like, obviously the three of them have not seen Kelsey, that means like something must have happened. So Kelsey's dad, Greg, he was a police officer and he's been a police officer for like 17 years at this point. So like he had always taught Kelsey and his other children the importance of staying in touch with their family anytime they went out. Like the importance of keeping them updated and answering their calls and their text messages so that they'll know that, okay, you're safe and there's nothing wrong. So obviously Kelsey being groomed like this and obviously the fact that this is just a sign that, oh, okay, that, yeah, the fact that they've called her, they've texted her, and they could not get in touch with her, like, this is just a sign that, okay, yes, something is actually going on. That's like me. For example, now, if my friends call me and I don't pick, they would immediately kind of panic. I remember when one, one, one of my friends called me and I did not pick, and she called me the second time and I, I didn't pick. She was, she was like, do you understand? She was like kind of scared. Like, she panicked a little bit, and then when I called her, she was like, it's unlike you not to pick your calls and i'm like yeah i know so yeah um her parents like this is part of her character this kind of person that she is because she always picks her calls she always keeps her family updated but like on this day she did not keep her family updated apart from that she's been trained so many times on how to keep updates on with her family about her whereabouts but within an hour there was like an extensive search for kelsey Police had gathered, everybody had gathered and they were searching for Kelsey. So like around 9.17 p.m., police they had actually found her car at Macy's, which was just a street across from Target. So when they had found her car, they did not find Kelsey, like there was no sign of Kelsey. So like this is what they knew that, okay, something had happened. Kelsey's wallet and purse were actually found inside her car. And this just ruled out the fact that yes, she was being robbed. At this point, the police were just left with just only one thinking that okay, yes, Kelsey was actually abducted. So they contacted Kelsey's mobile provider, Verizon. So they contacted Verizon that Verizon should give release data of release Kelsey's data and location to them, but Verizon were not willing to do that because they were not legally allowed to do so. So because Verizon refused to let out Kelsey's um, information out to the police. The police had no other choice but to, you know, look at other means of getting hold of what happened to Kelsey. This just led them to go to Target to ask for their surveillance footage just to find out how it has been with how Kelsey had moved from Target to where she was. So the surveillance footage showed that Kelsey entered Target at 6.55 p.m. and she wore a pink tank top and black shorts. And 30 seconds later, there was like a white male that was wearing white t-shirt and black shorts and he also entered the store behind her. As Kelsey was walking from aisle to aisle looking for the perfect gift to give to her boyfriend, so was this killer. He was also walking Wherever she went, wherever aisle she went, he was following. If she went to this aisle, he will follow her. If she went to that aisle, he will follow her. He was watching her closely 
and subtly he actually moved behind her he was watching her every move but unfortunately kelsey did not know that she was followed oof this was 2007 i know now the world is more woke like me if i find out you're following me even if it's for five seconds i just i scream <laughs> my friends know me for that i scream we are going to be uncomfortable together or i just stop for you to pass me that's just me or i just we, we watch ourselves but what i do most times is scream if you like think i'm crazy the two of us will be unfortunate so uncomfortable sorry so like we should try to be security conscious the world is the world is getting worse and worse and worse every passing day like now human lives mean nothing to people which is scary so that's why we should be more security conscious so basically kelsey she had no idea that she was being followed by this horrible man which child sad honestly speaking as kelsey paid for her items at checkout and ended the call with her mom the killer quickly left the store and went to his pickup truck to go and get his gun at 7 or 7 p.m kelsey made her way to her vehicle and when she made her way to her vehicle she was ambushed by this killer by gunpoint who put her into her own vehicle and she was never ever seen alive again on 6th of june four days after kelsey had disappeared Verizon, her mobile network, decided to release her data to the authorities. They found out that her phone had last pinged in the vicinity of Longview Lake, 17 miles away from her house in Missouri. Within 45 minutes, authorities they had actually found Kelsey's body and she was actually naked. And they had found her body under sticks and branches in a wooded area near Longview Lake. Like I said, she was naked. She had been raped, she had been sodomized, and she was strangled with her own belt, which was still sitting around her neck. People are so wicked in this life. Like, people are so wicked. You just wake up with the intent to kill. Life, you did not give somebody. You woke up with the intent to just stay and kill an innocent child who just went to get gifts for her boyfriend. Do you know like sometimes it'd be like, had I known, had I known. But like if you want to live your life with had I known, you would never get things done. But at the same time, there are people in this world that are actually very wicked. So this young girl, she was raped, she was sodomized. And after going through this trauma, this idiot of a killer decided to strangle her with her own belt and left her naked, just left her naked. And her belt was still like on in her neck, like round her neck. She didn't see this happening to her. She just went to get a gift. Like this is so painful. Like when my friend was talking about it on Snapchat, she was like, she was so mad. She was so mad. So the authorities released the images of Kelsey's suspected killer to the public. And it wasn't long before tips started coming in. And out of all these tips, there were just two tips that were actually very helpful to the police. So on the same day that Kelsey's body was found, a couple had actually called the police and told the police that the person that they actually put out in the media looked strikingly like their neighbor. And he's a 26-year-old boy who is known to them as Jack. But like his name is Edwin Roy Hall. A co-worker of Edwin also called the police and told the police that the day that the truck was actually shown on TV, they were having their lunch break. And then he looked at Edwin and he told Edwin, he was like, hey, isn't that your truck? Looking at Edwin and looking outside to Edwin's truck and I'm like, isn't that your truck? And Edwin, after seeing this, he just got up and told the boss at work and said, see, I'm very sick and I want to go home. So let's talk a little bit about Edwin. So who was Edwin? Like, how did Edwin become who we know today? So Edwin was sexually abused by his uncle before the age of six. And once he was seven years, they had put him in the, in the custody of the state. So there was a woman named Carol Hall who was reading articles on children who were eligible for adoption. And she saw Edwin and she knew about his case. So her and her husband, Don, they decided to adopt Edwin just to give him a better life and to make him recover from his trauma 
but that actually didn't help their purpose in come to pass because like Edwin was the more he grew up the more he exhibited severe behavioral problems both at home and in school there was even a time that he actually hit a boy's head with baseball bat and there was a time he threatened his adoptive sister at nine up at, at knife point so this act alone just made Carol and Don just to like take him back to the custody of the state just to protect the life of their family their children and their self so several years later when Edwin was in his early 20s Carol and Don Hall, they decided to like visit him and just find out how he was doing. And they were just so happy to find out that, oh my God, yes, he's married. And not only is he married, his wife was actually pregnant. They were expecting a baby on the way. So like he, um, his adoptive parents, like his former parents, they were actually very happy. And they were like, oh, okay. They were just so happy to see that, oh yeah, this guy has actually overcome his violent tendencies. He's more chappier, he's calmer. Like it's just everything like a parent who actually want but they didn't know that they were wrong that these guys still carried on this life for a very 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 long time so on 6th of june the authorities had actually gone to edwin's house and when they went to his house they actually found him packing with his wife aleph and then his four-year-old son and then they asked him why are you going to and he was like oh i'm going on vacation and then they asked him about the murder case and he was like i don't know how i have nothing to do with her and the police was like see like guys stop lying like come on your fingerprint is on her seat belt and your DNA is on her shirt. So we all know that, yes, you're, you have, one way or the other, you're actually linked to this murder. And because of all this evidence, he actually confessed. <sighs> this is going to be very disturbing. So Edwin had a MySpace page. Am I the only one that was never on MySpace? I think I'm the only one that was never on MySpace. I can't remember opening a MySpace account. I can't remember. But it seemed like everybody was on MySpace. So on a now deleted MySpace page, um, Edwin actually described himself to be like a sweet troubled soul who loved eating small children and harming small animals. How do you put that on MySpace? That's like putting that on Instagram. How? How was it legal? How did he put that on my space? Like, how? So Edwin was arrested and he was charged with aggravated kidnapping, rape, first degree murder and sodomy. His bond was set at $5 million and he actually pleaded guilty to all the charges that were laid against him. And he pleaded guilty because he wanted a plea deal to actually avoid death penalty in exchange for a full confession. This guy is so stupid, like, oh, you're scared to die. Oh, wow. You're scared to die, but you killed somebody. Oh, wow. I've never ever seen. You have the full-blown mind to kill somebody, a life you did not give, but you're scared to die. You see, okay, you're about to die, and you're scared. Why are you scared? It's just because I'm against the death penalty, but, like, just so you can confess can you imagine? He even has the F1 tree to hold confession. To hold confession. You have the opportunity to give this family peace to know, okay, what ha actually happened to their child. And you have the F1 tree to say, for me to confess to you, remove the, remove the death penalty. I don't understand. I don't understand. So much, please make me understand. This, I feel like sometimes they give all these killers, they give them, uh, how should I, they give them um, a way, a will. They'll be like, okay, if you confess, we'll promise not to kill you. But you killed somebody else. You literally killed someone else, but you don't want to die. Excuse me, I thought this life was booming around. This is why I say I don't believe in karma sometimes. This is why I said sometimes I don't believe in karma. So, as we all know, he admitted that, yes, he actually adopt, abducted her from the parking lot in Target. And then he drove her to Longview Lake in Missouri. And that was where he raped and he strangled her. He also said that he actually first noticed Kelsey because she had nice long legs. And guess what? He actually thought she was 12 years. What? This guy's lying in his confession. Number one, which 12-year-old child would drive a car? Which 12-year-old child will drive a car? Let's just start from there. And even if he thought she was 12, how would you fantasize a 12-year-old child? Did you think that was going to help him? So literally, he actually said that he thought that, okay, yeah, um, I saw her nice long legs and, okay, he didn't say long legs. So like, she had nice legs and I was drawn to it and then I actually thought she was 12. 
how would a 12 year old drive a car how so that day edwin he was literally roaming around targets like throughout that day before he met kelsey he was roaming around targets looking for his victim so he had actually approached women before he met kelsey asking them bizarre questions and like when none of them could give him face he then settled on kelsey whom he referred to as crime of opportunity but not everybody is normal people may look normal but in their head they are crazy they are crazy edwin edwin was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole following his sentencing he um the district attorney phil klein he actually stated my hope is that mr hall's name will be forgotten and the name of kelsey smith who she was and what she did will live on and it actually has so kelsey's parents greg and missy they actually created the kelsey smith act and this is a legislation that is has now been established in 28 states and counting this act, this act actually requires telecommunication carriers to actually disclose cell phone location data to law enforcement in case of missing persons who may be in great danger or death so kelsey's family they didn't stop there they actually also started the kelsey smith foundation which actually educates young adults on safety awareness and empowers them to avoid becoming victims of crime so even after kelsey's death she's actually saving countless of lives saving so many people and her legacy will continue to live on if you have a child please don't trust anybody with your child see the case of this edwin guy he was raped by his uncle from before he was six can you guys imagine like don't trust anybody with your child you people don't listen you don't listen don't trust anybody with your child this guy was raped and obviously remove this thing he must have gone through this whole trauma it's not easy because all his life is known violence does that make sense does that make sense if you're giving your child to somebody watch them watch watch your child this is what we learned last week too this is what we spoke about last week the freeway killer william bonin he was also molested before he was nine years old these people grew up to be serial killers we grew up to have the have, choose violence look after your child look after your child literally look at look after your at next week i don't want to come to another case where the child was being molested as a child or the the killer or the the culprit was being molested as a child i don't want to come back to that look after your child because i'm like why didn't i even talk about it this is what we discussed last week it's happening again i don't want to see repetitions but funny enough like most crime stories i read this is this is always the case they molested as children they came from a broken family the father used to beat them the father used to molest them the father used to trauma tragic this that that, that, that. like there's nothing that will cost you from training your child in in a happy home like don't involve your children in any trauma that you're going through honestly this is sad because this is second time in a row i'm talking about this so yeah thank you peace so guys like i said let's be careful wherever we go to like it's not like i said not everybody looks normal me i don't think everybody i don't say every, everybody as normal though i don't if someone is following you or someone is watching you tell somebody tell the security oh, i think this person is watching me do you understand tell the security oh i think this person is watching me tell somebody oh i think this person is watching me scream shout at the person why are you watching me why are you following me around scream creates traffic like creates traffic around so that people will see what is going on do you understand i don't understand how the security is in target didn't see this man hovering around target throughout the whole day i don't understand how they did not see that but anyways guys guys this is the end of this story thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate please kindly subscribe to my channel i can't scream that a lot please kindly subscribe to my channel like this video share thanks to everybody that has actually shared this video i really do appreciate please comment please help me grow help me grow please i really do appreciate help me grow I really do appreciate like i've been saying it a lot of times because i really do appreciate from the bottom of my heart like i really do appreciate i'm really really happy that you guys actually do love this video 
um can you like subscribe please share subscribe please share subscribe like comment thank you guys so much see you guys next week because this is a weekly thing now because this is my life this is what i love doing this is my passion so thank you guys so much thanks to 18 book for suggesting this case i really do appreciate thank you guys so much i really do appreciate thanks for believing in me and for stopping by until next time bye